I direct the research and environmental program for American Water, a large water and wastewater utility. Um, we operate in 32 states in the United States and in the province of Ontario and Canada. Between 3 and 4 percent of the um, electricity in the United States is used for treating water or wastewater. And um, in California, that can go up in, up in the range of close to, to 20 percent. Um, and that, that varies widely depending on the nature of the source, groundwater, surface water, if the water um, can come from by gravity from a mountain or has to be pump, pumped around. And that's really the reason for the high energy use in California. When you have to pump the water you know, from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state, you start to use some, some energy. And, um, and when we look at the uh, trend towards increasing uh, levels of treatment, we see that um, uh, UV and ozone, even microfiltration, will add about a 10% increase in our energy use. Um, but when we get to some of the more advanced treatments, ultrafiltration or uh, nanofiltration, reverse osmosis, it's a doubling of the energy use just for, just for the treatment portion alone. And, uh, and so that's a significant in investment in, in, in energy. 80 to 90 percent of the energy used by a water utility is actually in the pumping of the water. So fundamentally, our business isn't so much to treat water, it's to move water from here to your house. And in doing so, that creates, that needs a lot of energy. At, at eight pounds a gallon, um, we, we, we're, we're moving a lot of heavy stuff and that requires energy to put that into. And so um, the concern here is that the pumps that are used uh, may be actually older, as old as some of our pipes. And so, um, and so while we've been talking about the problem with our aging infrastructure, uh, it's not just that infrastructure part is in the, in the aging pipes, but it's not using necessarily um, very efficient means for moving that water. And perhaps that'd be an area then um, for um, at universities to consider um, how do we optimize our energy use of our pumps? Are there new designs that we could do? Are there more efficient ways of pumping that water? That would be a huge benefit to this industry. 42 billion gallons uh, produced for drinking water uh, um, each day in the United States. Uh, so if 7 billion leaks out, that's about 18% of our water leaks out of the pipes as we uh, pump it from, from the treatment plant um, to your house. And not only is that leaking water a resource issue, and as we get into climate change and have scarce water, we can't afford to lose that water, but from a climate change part is that there's an investment in energy to pump, to treat and pump that water that, that leaks out. So it's hugely inefficient on a number of different areas and something that is, from the infrastructure standpoint, is not really tolerable. And so one way that we've been addressing this issue is looking for new approaches to looking at leak control. So um, not only leak detection is, uh, is preserving this, rep, this uh, precious resource, but it's giving insights into the factors that are causing the pipes to break in the first place. Which then leads us then to this issue around distribution system integrity. Um, and this integrity is important, not only the pipes um, to, uh, to be able to convey the water, but to convey the water at adequate pressure and the re reliability of supply. And so I showed you already one picture of a leaking uh, water main next to uh, a sewer main. So whatever caused this sewer main to break um, uh, also caused this water line to break. And so it's not um, too difficult to conceive uh, how there might be um, sewage uh, present in this area, and so if this water main had experienced one of these negative pressure transients, how contaminants could come in. But it, it clearly shows the interrelationship between the water and wastewater uh, systems, and that's the message I want to uh, take here, is not only do we have an important issue around drinking water infrastructure, we have important issues around wastewater infrastructure. Drinking water and wastewater are intimately related, if, if, not in, if not so much as because our pipes are laid close to each other, which raises a question. We've talked about the, the drinking water infrastructure challenge, but there's also an even larger wastewater infrastructure challenge. Um, 
the, uh, the American Society of Civil Engineers have given wastewater um, uh, uh, reliability uh, a very low, uh, a poor rating. And, uh, and every year, um, 800 and it's estimated 850 billion gallons of untreated sewage uh, is discharged through um, sanitary uh, sewer overflows and, um, and resulting in about uh, 10 billion gallons of raw sewage um, annually. And uh, EPA estimates that 390 billion is needed for wastewater infrastructure upgrades added to the 300 billion for drinking water infrastructure upgrades. So you're now in about 700 billion.